Any other question? Yes, sir. I'm Michael Kwa, uh, visiting fellow at the Energy Studies Institute. I think if you look at what, uh, what energy institute? The Energy Studies Institute that was just formed a year ago. I'm a visiting fellow here from the U.S. Okay. I think you have very eloquently uh, shown that Singapore could be a beacon to the world, given the sustained policy that you had, beginning with your anti-pollution uh, stance when uh, the first when this nation was first founded. The whole issue with the U.S. is the fact that uh, consistency in energy policy somewhat varies from administration to administration. So as a word of advice to the, whoever is the incoming president, how would you uh, advise them on getting a consistent longer term policy? Because in the whole area of energy and environmental sustainability, I think your example of long term sustained persistence is what has made the difference. Thank you. Uh, I think the next president has got a plate full of very urgent problems. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, climate change is something way beyond the horizon for him. So I do not believe he'll be very excited if you tell him that this is to be at the top of his agenda. He's got his own domestic problems. If Mr. Obama wins, as the polls show he will, then his first thought must be, how do I not lose the midterm elections and how do I get re-elected at the end of four years? <coughs> Which every president does. So if you do unpopular things, you won't be re-elected. Uh, it will be tough. As I've said, the lesson will have to hit them hard. When the insurance companies say this area is not insurable uh, or you can pay this enormous premium because I don't want to insure your house or your caravan or your yacht or whatever. And that's when that part of the country will get serious. But it's such a huge country you can move to a safer part and just say, all right, abandon this. Because when Katrina happened in the uh, New Orleans, there was some talk say, why not abandon it? It's, it's such a hopeless situation. The levees will go again. And uh, so you move on. I mean, there's a vast open country. And uh, if you compare to India and China, it's underpopulated. They can take twice, three times the population they have. So you just move on to another city or another part of the country. And with Global warming, you never know. Canada can become prairie land where they now have permafrost and you just move north. <laughs> All these, uh, this kind of prospect makes a society less urgent in feeling less urgent in solving it. We've got just this 700 square kilometers and we've got to preserve it at all costs. So there's an urgency, there's an imperative need to do everything possible. Uh, if you have the size of uh, American the United States and the population is just 300 million, well, you need more people. That's all. And they're getting many more people year by year. So I don't really don't know how to do it. <laughs>